my loves, thank you so much for being here today. Um, I feel like often on this channel, I'm basing my themes for a video all about the products, like where they're coming from, what their price range is or whatever. And this video is more so gonna focus on the look and recreating a look, kind of, part of the look is really a key inspiration. And then there's another element that I'm really gonna spotlight for the rest of the face. But let's talk about what this look is that really caught my eye. This is crazy. This is Selena Gomez and this picture was allegedly taken of her at the Met Gala, but it came out that that was a totally fake picture, like she wasn't there. What is this world we live in? Like this picture was created of her? I don't know, but whatever the case, I really liked her simplified eye makeup. And as you look at it, you can see it's really about the shape, about the lines. Shadow wise, it's just very natural, but what I have been noticing, not just about her, but other celebrities too, we're seeing a combination of a winged liner, a really lifted look, paired with a lined, darkened um, waterline, lower inner rim. And that's what we've got going on here. So I really wanted to pull off that eye look, but color-wise on the rest of the face, I wanted to give it a little bit more of a punch. I've been getting questions about the Amy Cole stick, especially the shade Flame. Some of you have been saying, I got that in the Sephora sales like you did, and I wanna know how to work with this color. So we're gonna do that today. It's gonna be our lip and cheek. So picture the Selena eye. We'll just call it the Selena eye, whether it was real or not. And then that really pretty warm reddish pop on the cheeks and the lips. Now skin wise, that's where it all begins, right? I'm gonna go pretty full coverage. I'm getting that kind of a vibe out of the face as I look at it. And any kind of radiance or glow seems to be pretty subtle. We're not seeing a real dewy look on her skin here. So I'm gonna start off with something from Rare Beauty since we're talking about Selena, it makes sense. I pulled out my Rare Beauty primer here. It's the Illuminating Primer and I hadn't used it in a while. So I thought let's use that as a base since I'm gonna have such full coverage on top of it. So get this all worked in. This is a really pretty primer, by the way. Mm, look at that glow. So what's the point of putting on a glowy primer when you know um, whatever's going on top is just gonna be really matte? Well, I feel like it kind of works on that matte finish just ever so slightly. And I think things kind of come together to look ultimately natural and pretty as far as the finish goes. This added a little moisture to my skin and I think my foundation that I'm gonna use, CoverGirl Outlast um, Extreme Wear, I think it's gonna benefit from both the added moisture and the little bit of glow. Still gonna be a lot of coverage on top, but you know what I mean? The products are gonna work together a bit. Also, I left something out of my Dollar Tree video. I got this sponge and I'm pumped to use it. It feels really soft. There's nothing that feels exactly like a beauty blender blender. Like that's a really special texture. This feels as soft as a Real Technique sponge, which in itself is impressive because I'm used to buying cheap sponges that just stay too hard. So this is nice and soft. And look at that surface area on the bottom. Like I'm really excited to dab in my makeup with that today. So again, it's CoverGirl Outlast Extreme Wear Light Airbrush Finish. I love this foundation. We call it Red Cap. I wear natural beige and I'm gonna pair that with the concealer from that line as well. It's a really good line. So I'm pumping out nearly a full pump gives you quite a bit. Um, standard liquid foundation consistency. We dab it around and then we will bop it in with the sponge. First time using this sponge, so we'll see. It is fully dampened. We're just gonna use that big end to bop it in. Ooh, I'm loving. I thought that was gonna be good and it totally is. Just using that entire bottom end and look at the beautiful coverage. See what I mean? That primer is doing something underneath to give just a little more luminosity than this might have if, say, I used Benefit Professional underneath. Gotta get around the nose. It's just so funny as that picture came across, I was like, oh my gosh, she looks so beautiful. <laughs> I find out it's not even real. What? Still a beautiful picture, can still take inspiration, I guess. Okay, really making sure to get around the jawline, the bottom of the ear, we don't always talk about that, but especially with my hair pulled back. Yeah, I totally enjoy that sponge. 125 at the Dollar Tree, and something about just that whole round, kind of flat surface area. It makes such quick work of the blending. I love it. And then I'm gonna use my Outlast Concealer in Ivory. So as you can see, this looks gonna be kind of a hodgepodge mix of high-end and drugstore. I think that's kind of nice. So I get a little bit of that concealer squeezed out. A little goes a long way. And we're gonna brighten up this under eye area. Actually, I might need a teeny bit more if I wanna put it anywhere else on the face. And you know, this may amount to a good like 
prom look if you're thinking about prom makeup. You could obviously sub in any kind of look you like on lip and cheek. You could take like a totally different monochromatic type of product there. She seems to have kind of like a, a toasty look on her cheeks. It makes me think of Patrick Ta. Um, she's baked, possibly. Sort of a contour that merges right into a really earthy looking blush color. And then of course she's got that nude lip, which is beautiful and would be easy to duplicate. But I was also looking for an opportunity just to show you guys about that Amy Cole stick. I'm working around some smaller areas because while the sponge is great for all over the face, it is always going to be hard to work a full-size sponge into the crevices of your nose. I'm really pleased with the coverage. Always love the combo of that foundation and concealer. And now I'm gonna set the under eye. I'm gonna use my Laura Mercier powder. I've been using this one a lot. It's the translucent setting powder, the tone-up kind in the shade Rose. So it's lightly pink, really brightening. And we're gonna use that to set the under eye and center of the face. So my friends, I've been watching Little House on the Prairie. Oh my gosh. So the reason why I even thought about it was because a clip from Little House on the Prairie randomly came up like in my TikTok feed. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I've actually never watched that show. I always remember mom referencing it at times. Like I think my sister and brother probably watched it a lot, but I never really had. Definitely not that I remembered. And it's on Amazon Prime. You can just watch all the episodes. And I started watching it with the girls and it's just so darn wholesome and intriguing and interesting. And I just, I love it. I love it. Mom said after that I need to watch The Waltons. <laughs> That's my new show obsession. Bub and I aren't like binging it at nighttime. We're watching it with the kids like in the evenings. We'll watch an episode. They're very into it though. So I'm just kind of dusting away what I put on there. Light amount of powder. Don't think I need really much powder anywhere else right now. What Bub and I have been watching, we finished up, what's it called? Is it The Night Agent? We watched that, we both enjoyed that show. I believe that was on Netflix. And now we're watching something that is honestly hilarious. Is it called The Jury or The Juror? I'll look it up and confirm and where you can watch it. But basically there's all these actors who are playing the judge, the jurors, the entire courtroom situation. And there's one guy who is really just a normal human being in all this. Like everyone else is an actor but him. And he thinks he's just doing this and there's some kind of documentary being filmed on it and everybody's just kind of playing into the documentary, but they're all actors but him. And it's amazing. <laughs> it's hilarious. Okay, I'm gonna use this Mario stick. This is the Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick in the shade Medium. I do like this. Um, I think I've said before, like, I don't think it's quite as soft as maybe my M Cosmetics or my Persona, but I still like it and I still work it in. I think she just has a very sculpted look. I'm making sure to take it kind of around that part of the face as well. I don't often go for the attached brush. I just feel like it's a little stiff and doesn't have a ton of movement, but in a pinch, it could be worked with, you know? I just prefer my Sephora 56 and we're gonna blend that up right into the hairline. Medium is a really good color for me though, I will say. And I'm gonna use a little bit of bronzer as well. I feel like her skin is a bit warmed up in this picture. And as far as placement on this contour, I tried not to go too low. I tried to place it kind of like right on the, the lower part of that cheekbone. I guess I kind of placed it on it, but knowing that I would try to blend it a little low, if that makes any sense. <laughs> like as I'm blending, I'm working my brush closer to the hollow of the cheek than above it. You know, you can kind of move the product a bit as you blend that jawline. It's fun to have an inspiration pick. I feel like I should do more things like this and I welcome your requests. It can be fun to see like a Hollywood look or even one of those like Vogue tutorials on YouTube. You know how the celebrities get on and they'll do it on Allure's um, YouTube channel as well. They'll get on there and give like their makeup routine but there are so many times where I'd like to see it be drugstore or something like that. We're looking sculpted but I want a little more warmth and my friend David, I bought this uh, through him through Bergdorf Goodman, the Bronze Goddess. It's called the Healthy Glow Bronzer in the shade 01 Sunrise. It's so pretty. Look at this. It's got that little like kind of core color there, which, you know, gives you maybe a hint of a blushed vibe, but seeing those shades together, it reminds me a lot of, um, and I just kind of swirl my brush over everything. It reminds me a lot of like 
pink leopard. Remember when Too Faced had that? It had all the different tones in it, except it was cool pink, not really peach. But this is really pretty. It's not super deep. And we're applying it just kind of like bronzer, letting it come a little higher here, maybe a little more like blush. Look at that. I think that's really pretty. And the finish is so nice. It's just like a gentle sheen because I don't feel like she has a ton of shimmer on her face at all. Let me take it down. I think David told me, he's like, you can apply as much of this as you want and it just keeps looking great. I always have David's contact info in my description box if you ever want anything from Estee Lauder because he is the go-to guy for Estee Lauder. Bergdorf Goodman in New York. He can send it your way. You can buy it through him, but oh, that's beautiful. I love it. And the compact is so luxe and pretty. Now we're moving into the Amy Cole stick in Flame. So I have two other shades of this. It all started with the color called Spice, which I think is the perfect plum. Um, I have Dune as well. I believe that's what that one's called. Yeah, it's a little more nude, toasty neutral. Um, and then this one called Flame just has that really bold warmth. And I'm going to show you how to use this. And the questions I got were, how do I make this wearable? Think about maybe a stippling brush with this one. It's very intense. And I'm going to use my e.l.f. Dome stipple. It's a great brush. This could be good for foundation, but I also think it's good here too. And I'm just like dabbing across my stick a little bit. And then I'm going to treat it like I'm literally just doing that stipple method on the cheeks, okay? With that pretty warmth. This is where we're deviating a little bit from the Selena look that I came across because we're gonna really just fire up the cheeks and lip with some beautiful warmth. And you can just dab. And then I feel like the brush is so big that you can use that primary spot where the product is. And then I find myself kind of turning the brush and using the ends that don't have product just to blend and soften. I mean, that's perfect. Again, get a little bit of product on, just a few swipes across your stick. Feel yourself just stippling it onto the cheek. And then, you know, this could be a matter of you using the side of this brush or bringing in a whole separate brush and then doing a little blending over. Oh, it's so fresh. Color is gorgeous. And obviously, I'm not scared of going a little bit hard with this product. Like, I'll, I'll wear a blush that can really be seen. If you want to go even softer, just get even less on whatever brush it is you're using. You really are in control of it, but I think a stipple brush helps so much. So that's beautiful. It's gonna be fun to pop on the lip with that as well. For now, actually, I think I need a little lip balm on, um, just something to soften things up. I need to use my $1.25 roll-on gloss from LA Colors in Watermelon. Lips are feeling a little dry. At this point for the face, I feel like we're pretty much done. I'm just kind of letting the skin's whatever natural radiance it seems to have right now kind of come through. I might do a little bit of a setting powder. I actually have this new from Laura Mercier, the Real Flawless Luminous Perfecting Pressed Powder. And it's interesting. It's really soft. Um, it has just the slightest bit of a sheen. This might be pretty as like a finishing touch for the skin, just going over all this. One of those things where you feel like you're setting, but you're not going too far with it. Ooh, that is nice. For brows, I mean, we can all have our own brow shape if we were really trying to <laughs> be Selena. Um, she has a little bit straighter brow than mine, but there's still a little arch going on there. So I'm just gonna fill in. I'm using my Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil today in the shade four. Do you ever think about days where maybe you might tell a person like, I'm just not in a very good mood or I'm kind of in a funk and you know, it's okay. It's okay to have those times where you recognize something's feeling a little off in me right now. But um, I was listening to somebody talk about how declaring the day or declaring the week to be off or in a bad place. I think sometimes we underestimate our ability to sort of rebound and for things to get better. Like, are you gonna write off an entire day? Are you gonna say like, because I woke up on the wrong side of the bed and I'm in a bad mood from what happened yesterday or whatever the multitude of reasons could be. Like I said, I mean, we all have a right to not have the best of days, but when we start, I think, saying out loud, this is just an awful day. Like it's one of those days. And I've done that too. And I'm gonna try going forward to, to catch myself if I ever do that, because it's like, what's the use in writing off the whole day. 
like the day can rebound, but I'm basically saying out loud, we're staying in this, in this low vibration kind of place, you know? There are many hours in a day. There's a lot of chance to change your mindset and try to pull out of those, you know, discouraging times. And maybe in all honesty, a, a whole day, just things aren't working out. But when we start declaring it, saying it out loud, complaining about it, verbalizing all that, and then we start saying, or we keep this little repeating thought, oh, it's just one thing after the next, nothing can work out today. I've said this before, but you'll find what you're looking for. When you get programmed into that place of things aren't working out for me today, you will continue to see little things that frustrate. You're looking through life with your lenses of what are the little bad things? What are the little frustrations I can pick up on? Whereas if you're thinking about gratitude and you're thinking about, yeah, truth be told, it hasn't been a great morning, but I'm ready to flip the script. I'm ready to turn over a new leaf. One day with Biddy, uh, we were getting in the van and she and Belle had been just bickering about something they do, you know. <laughs> I got two girls close in age, you know, they want the same toy, they want the same thing. They were bickering about something. I literally found a leaf on the floor of the garage. I turned it over and I said, we are turning over a new leaf starting now. You make a decision to take a turn, just like when you're driving in your car and you choose to turn down another path, you know, let's start taking control of this and not sort of declare that the entire day is gonna be a loss just because a few things happened in the morning that didn't agree with you. This is Nick's Control Freak Brow Gel. I've just been thinking about that. I don't want you to think that I'm saying, oh, you're never allowed to feel bad or you're never allowed to feel low or down or in a bad mood. Have all the feelings you want, but don't even, make it worse by declaring your whole day to be a bad day because things can change. And just think about what you're giving your attention to. If you're starting your day with a gratitude journal, you know, thinking about those three things, like what did I write about in my gratitude journal today? Oh yeah, you can jot down things to be grateful for at any time in the day. You can have an ongoing gratitude journal in your notes app. And, and when you're starting to feel a little low, think about what are those things that I am grateful for right now? And the list can go on and on. Okay, we're moving on to the eyes. I've got the brows done and really any simple little neutral look could do here. I'm gonna pull out a little quad called Bear. This is from Hard Candy. It's the Moods palette, Bear Monochrome Shadows. And I think I talked about this before, but I feel like this is more balanced than uh, Cream and Sugar is from e.l.f. I really like having that matte mid-tone. Got shimmers here and here, but I'm gonna start in with that matte mid-tone color. And yeah, we're just going to shape the crease a bit. It is going to come outward. The wing comes out and the shadow kind of follows with sort of a lifted look. So as I do it, I'm thinking of the outer tip of my brow and that that's the direction things are going to be going, but not in a really dark way. And once that wing is on, we can always add to this a little bit. Bringing it out thinking about coming outward in the direction of the tip of the brow. We're gonna bring in some of the dark matte brown now. That watermelon roll on lip gloss, <laughs> I tell you. This is my Morphe flat brush. We're just using that little matte brown there. We don't wanna be super duper deep and dark, but we're also just wanting a sensible contoured eye, basically. So patting that brown on the outer corner, we can flip the brush and really make sure it gets into the crease. It's hard to say how much actual shimmer is on the lid, but I can just tell there's some lightness there. So I think our pearly shade in this palette will be perfect um, on the inner lid. But before we get there, I wanna take an even smaller brush. So we're gonna use Profusion Small Pointed, see? And we're gonna go into that same dark brown and just really make sure we've got it where we want it. See me going directly into the deepest part of that crease and kind of swirling up and out, okay? The liner is a big part of this. Once that's on, you can always add a little more shadow just to really follow the shape that you're putting on. But it's subtle. It's subtle as far as the shadow goes. This is just a great little everyday quad. Working it out, continually thinking about an invisible line that's right here and not wanting to drop below it, okay? The way I was lining that up, by the way, was corner of the eye and outer edge of the brow. Yes, tasty, toasty. We can take our original crease brush, which probably has a little product still on it. Blend over that, looking great. Then I'm pulling in a little bit smaller brush and I'm gonna go to this pearly shade right here. You can see like the goldeny color, very metallic, a little different texture. And then you've got this pearl right here. And so we're gonna use the pearl and 
I'm not laying it on too thick because I don't want this to be a really loud moment right here, but just let it touch the darkness that we just placed on the outside. Like I said, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what's going on with her look at this juncture, but I can tell something is light above her liner. Looking good? Making sense to anybody else? Working for me. I've got a liner pen that I'm loving right now. It's the Sephora Colorful Winget Felt Liner Waterproof. Shade is Little Black Dress. As we can see, there is a wing. It's coming right in line with her lower lash line, like you can just see where it extends up. It's not huge, but it really is important, I think, for the look. She looks so lifted. So take your Cookie Monster Mirror. Should I put little lashes on Cookie? Maybe another day. You can tell her liner goes all the way to the inner corner. Corner. We're not wanting it to be too thick. We can definitely see her lid, just a teeny bit of lid space when her eyes are open, so we don't want the liner to cover that up. And once I hit just about to the edge, that's what I'm thinking about taking off with my wing, coming up from the bottom to meet it, and I have this kind of open triangle, okay? And then I just color it in. Okay, and then we kind of look at the picture and reassess and say, is it enough? I think it could actually go a little bit further. Okay, like that. Now let's try to be symmetrical about it. Gosh, I love this liner pen. It's really dark and it lasts so well. Like, it truly is waterproof. It's like the last thing to come off of my face as I'm removing my makeup. It does really want to stay on there. As we get close to the edge, close to the corner, we try to have lift off, come up from the bottom. We create a triangle, an open triangle, and we fill it in. It's way thicker than I want at the outside. I want it more tapering off, so I'm gonna really try to make sure I'm only using the point. Only the point is touching my skin. I'm anchoring my whole hand on my face, so I'm in control. I'm gonna go to the very edge here and just try to give it a teensy bit to taper off into. I'm gonna be honest with you, it's not my favorite wing work, but it'll do, and I think it's creating the vibe. Part of why her look is so lifted, the liner on the bottom appears to only be on the inner rim, and I've got some great liners I've been playing with lately. It's called L'Oreal Infallible Grip. These were sent to me in PR. I've been testing them. In a recent look I was doing, I did like a teal in the lower inner rim. It lasted all day, and I've used black on my waterline also. Really good option. It's got a little smudger tip if you put it on the skin, but yeah, this is going on the inner rim. Just like that. And do you see what that does? When things aren't dropping down lower, everything looks a little heightened, especially with that wing. And then just on the outer corner, just where it makes sense to connect, we're gonna put a little bit of liner there, okay? Little bit of liner on the skin to connect to the wing. What I'm gonna do in the most controlled way possible is take a little bit of this brown. What's the most controlled way possible? An angled brush, your finest angled brush little bit of the brown, and that's gonna come right on the skin, feeling like it's right in between the lashes, just for a teensy bit of softness there. Nothing big. You see where my little, like, crease under the eye is? I'm not even taking up that whole space, you know? We are just working it in between the lashes. And if you wanna clean up your wing at all, you can use your dark shadow to just smooth it out a little bit. This wing is a little bit more the ideal thing I was looking for. This wing is trying to be more like, walk like an Egyptian, but I'm feeling a little unbalanced, so I might need to add just a bit over here. Just extended it out slightly. No big deal. I'm taking both my mats back and forth with my small pointed brush, and I am going right along with the shape. Okay, a little bit above the crease, just deepening, okay? See where that's coming out to play? We're giving lift, not getting too dark. And I brought up some false lashes, but I'm not convinced that there's even a false lash involved here. I feel the slight shadow of a little bit of lower mascara, and I can tell there is some upper mascara, but it's not a wildly thick lash. We're gonna curl here. I'm gonna use my Lawless One and Done, and my Cali Ray Come Hell or High Water. And while you think of this step as like potentially adding more drama to the look, when you've got a wing like this, the mascara is actually, even though it's more makeup, 
it's like a softening step. It's like you're putting just the fluttery little butterfly wings on the look. You're taking what was originally just an edge and providing softness. Oh, I'm loving that. Our pool got opened yesterday. About that time. I mean, the air is still way too cold, but you know, it's encouraging. Really top story in our house right now. The kitties got spayed yesterday. Yeah. They're gonna be wearing little cones for 10 days. They were not loving it coming home, but now that they've been out from the anesthesia, like this morning, they seemed like their normal selves. They're soft cones and you can flip them back, I realized. So that helps them get at their food a little easier. But they got through everything fine yesterday. And you know, it's just one of those things, it's gotta be done. I really hadn't thought about it for a while because like I knew eventually they had to be spayed. The people we adopted them from, like we just got them from an individual, it wasn't like a shell that immediately took care of the spaying and the vaccinations and stuff like that. It was on us to figure that out and I guess I just wasn't thinking, oh, it's the time is near, but it's time. Like when we got Cupcake, she was old enough for that to have already happened in the shelter. Okay, see how this fringe of lash is just like really doing something for the look in a subtle way? And on the lower lashes, again, I can tell there's just a little something not a lot, because when you start doing a lot, then you really change the lift that you were working to achieve. Keep it light. Okay, I'm really pleased with the eye. To sum it up, if you're trying to recreate this soft neutral shadow, give it some wing. Um, you decide how much wing you personally feel like having. It could be barely there. It could be somewhere kind of in the middle here. I could picture also an extreme wing if you wanted to really make it big. Lashes or no lashes. I could see those half lashes that I wear sometimes from Amazon being really pretty to kind of frame this look. But just the mascara too is fine. It keeps it simple and then dark liner in the lower inner rim. You could probably use brown or black. Now for the lips. Um, first off, I'm gonna take kind of a warm nude liner and apply that all over. And then we're going to go in with this beautiful warmth, the flame color from the Amy Cole stick. So this is Hard Candy's Insta Pout in Kiss and Tell. This is just gonna give us some definition. I love these lip liners. They're smooth, they go on with ease, but they last really well. Use the little brush side to help blend it around. I mean, that in itself is looking a lot like Selena's starting out shade. She's maybe got a little more like yellowish nude in there, but this is where we deviate. We're taking some of this. You could dab it straight on the lips if you want really opaque color. Okay, that one swipe, that was opaque. But blend it around. Oh, that's so pretty. And I love it with the simple eye. But these sticks have kind of a matte finish. When you put them on the lips, it's that blotted idea. I love that. The eye makes it feel just a little bit exotic. The lip and cheek makes it feel glamorous, yet still kind of easy. There's probably still powder left on this under eye bullet brush. I'm just gonna carry it around here. Tap into the nose area where we really want good staying power. Let's reinforce the curl of the lashes. I am so pleased with this look. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Let me know if there's any other celebrity inspired looks that you'd like to see or just any kind of technique that you'd like to see sorted out. I mean, I'm not so sure I did this perfectly, but I feel like it's an idea, a concept that leads to, I think, a more lifted eye, a very refined looking eye that I think we just turn on the spring and summer when we grab out a bright stick like this. Okay. Okay. And if you don't have the Amy Cole stick, maybe look in your collection and see if you have any matte cream lipsticks, you know? Lipstick can totally turn into cream blush, so think about that. And if you got any reds you wanna try working with, I'm sure you could pull off a really similar look to what's happening here. So thank you again, my friends. I love you, and I will see you again very soon. Bye.